Now the thing about sound waves is that they move at just under 300 million meters per second, like any other part of the electromagnetic spectrum, while in a vacuum. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Bob and Threadbear, and welcome back to a pair of crates that I really should have gotten the first time around. Not that there's anything, you know, game-changing in here. Just some 10mm ammo, and if I can move the crate... Broad Charger ammo, which I've been full on for a long time now. But there is one other thing I wanted to show you before we left. See, if you go up here, and just around the corner here, a little too far to do it unaugmented, but if you cut all the way over here, you can see that there's a lot of detail, actually, that is impossible to see unless you're in this specific position up here. And that's just one of the other things I thought was really neat. All this attention to detail that you could only appreciate by trying to exploit the game by jumping around. There's nothing else up there, of course, but... Gunter told me it's true. We already heard that. Onward, back to you, Natko, once again. I'm noticing a trend. But why fight fate? Check in with Manderley so we can get out of here. We gotta move. We'll start, as always, with the comm van here. Nothing down here, looks like, this time. Nothing back here, either. It's a little boring. Well, something in here, though. 10mm ammo I don't need, and some more sapo shells, which are still welcome. I'll eventually get a shotgun that's worth a damn, and sapo is going to make it... It has to do with your brother. Really? Sabo is going to make the shotgun more useful overall. Vanderly is pleased that you followed orders. He wants to see you. Oh, and before we go down, you may have noticed this is the same is kind of left? gate that we could jump through before, but unfortunately, there is an invisible wall here in front of these holes. They did think of that. We got the news. Nobody really believes it. Too bad about Paul. Guess that goes to show we can't be too sure of anyone. But I know you're different, JC. I remember from the Academy. You better get downstairs for a debriefing. You better get downstairs for a debriefing. Interesting note. This computer has absolutely nothing on it until right now. At which point you see that there's a general memo that says that Paul... You better get downstairs for a debrief. Yeah, I, I got that. Paul Denton's status as an agent has been revoked. Nothing really earth-shattering there, of course. Manderly wants to see you. You know the drill. Man, it's like you really get to know the UNATCO crew down here after a while personalities really start to come out. It's a question of who benefits society more. But who decides that? You? It's implicit. I think Paul just had a soft spot for the plague victims. Every human institution is like a pyramid. Those with ability are at the top. They're more important. Maybe it's the foundation that's important. When the foundation's gone, they make the decisions. They keep the machine running. Therefore, they must be protected first. I'm not saying Paul was right. It's basic tactics. Protect your command centers, your airstrips, your industrial zones. It's just the rationing. Seems like the government could pay VersaLife to manufacture more. Corporal Collins, I should note, is the guy who was ready to kiss Paul's ass the last time we were here. Hello, Agent Denton. Hi, JC. Shame about Paul. We'll miss him. Nothing down there. We were just talking about the Ambrosia situation, looking at it philosophically. Heck of an operative. What a day, huh? Heck of an operative. Really just not much around anymore. I mean, 
I guess I could say I stole it all, but really things have just gotten a lot quieter now. And oh, oh, the weapon mod fairy has been by. I guess someone decided to kick my welcoming present underneath the desk or something. Yeah, more weapon recoil. Up to 40% now. <laughs> you know, let's check. Nope, security's still tight. All we've got is a note from Jacobson. Jacobson, by the way, will freak out, but also erase the logs of what you did if you killed Anna Navarra. So he's... he's really a helpful dude. Nice guy. Not many people around here, but there's someone new on the news. What kind of pain? Behind the eyes, a sharp burning, almost electrical. How's your bioelectric lip? It's always at 100%. I like to stay prepared. That's probably it right there. Free radicals. You should charge your systems only when they've been significantly drained. I wasn't informed of that. It's a lot like an electric razor. If you leave it plugged in all the time, the battery loses its zero point. Just watch your levels. Interesting. Thanks, Doctor. Let me know how it goes. It's sort of an obscure way to say, don't let yourself be topped off all the time. I saw you listening in. Yes, it's true. I have augmentations like yours. Don't you work down in Washington? Actually, I'm the director of FEMA. Sounds like you wouldn't have much use for physical augmentations. You underestimate the demands of my work. We deal with every sort of natural and unnatural disaster you can imagine. But you're the director. You work behind a desk. Am I behind a desk right now? No, I'm not. That's because we have a situation here in New York. I got to my position because I can fix things. You will see shortly because as you have probably noticed yourself, this agency is broken and needs an overhaul. How in the world would the Federal Emergency Management Agency have authority over an international anti-terrorist organization? What do you mean by overhaul? You will receive a memo in a few days. I am still collecting data. UNATCO was very effective this evening. We recaptured the shipment. You don't have to worry, Agent. It's the softer elements I am after. Like who? You're beginning to exceed your clearance. What are you? Angel OA? Excuse my persistence. I'll wait for the memo. Good. Carry on. I said no more questions. I have good reason to hold back the announcement. Dismissed, Agent. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I love the way he delivers that line. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I said no more questions. I oh, gotta ruin it. Get everybody patched up. I did my best. You're looking good. Never felt better. They just dropped off a few liters of the ambrosia you recovered, by the way. Good work out there, Denton. I want you to know, we will not let your brother's activity cast its shadow on you. Yes, sir. I'm grateful for that. I just wish we'd found out sooner. No harm done. We have you to take his place. Is a few leaders going to be enough? Well, no one on staff's gonna catch Grey Dead this month. Paul said UNATCO uses the ambrosia supply to influence national governments. What do you think about that? So it's true. He went over to the NSF. Yeah, he tried to recruit me. What? You? Work for the NSF? Did he really expect you to believe that UNATCO is part of some global conspiracy? I waxed his boss. Maybe he'll get the message. If there's a conspiracy, it's a Versa life. They're the ones making money off the play. Whatever his politics, I'm still gonna miss your brother. Tell him that if you see him. I don't think it will be long before Versalife steps up production of the vaccine. If there's a conspiracy, it's a Versalife. They're the ones making money off the play. Uh, it's time to get to this ATM. It's been calling to me. It's all... It's lonely now because it's friendly. Public bulletin machine has disappeared. And I have no idea how or why.
bullet to the head. That's justice. You catch on fast. Ah, good. At least there's one thing here. And it's a lockpick, like the one I just used. I can't believe it, JC. What got into Paul? I guess he got a better offer. What a blow. I don't know how we'll recover. It's almost like losing a son. I don't understand it myself, but we've got to go on. Is Manderly available? Go right in, JC. He has a lot to discuss. But first... You better not keep him waiting. You're going to make a mess. Just check here. Nope, her account still does not exist. Before I forget, gotta do some redecorating again. Alright, let's see how close I can get to Manderly this time, just off the side here. Objectives complete, sir. Aww. Good, good. Here's your op bonus as usual. 1,000 for a flawless performance. You might be interested to know that your tenacity has impressed some very important people. I only wish to serve the Coalition to the best of my ability. They have high hopes for you, JC. You understand the importance of loyalty, don't you? Yes, sir. Well, that's what seems to be missing in your brother. I hope you'll understand why the Coalition has shut down Paul's augmentations and has activated the kill switch. Activated what? He's our enemy now. He's gone, JC. The Coalition wants you to understand that he's just another terrorist, like the ones that have died by your very hand this evening. Can they really kill him? With the press of a button? Yes, and you too. So take these orders seriously. They're sending you to Hong Kong. What about Paul? Will I get to see him again? Please, just get your equipment and meet our pilot jock at the helipad. You'll need to take out a man called Tracer Tong. Paul's contact in Hong Kong. Prove that they can trust you. JC? Yes? It's critical that they trust you. If you say so. You'll behave like a professional. That's an order. But first, let me just hack your computer here quick. Alright, looks like Jaime Reyes is worried about excessive force. And Walton Simons is sending Agent Sherman to oversee whatever's going on. Also, there's a new newspaper. It's about the Hell's Kitchen raid. Apparently APR, at least, actually does have a uh, midnight edition. Hmm. Well, go figure. Then what'd you do? I chased them into the building. Weren't you scared? A little, but when I'm wearing this helmet, I've learned to set aside the instincts of a civilian and be completely professional. They had assault guns. Tactically, I had the advantage. It was important to act before the situation changed. How you troopers do it, I can't imagine. Flirt much? You won't give up, will you? What's wrong? Agent Denton, the guy I met in the bathroom. Oh, oh, I see. My vest caught a few slugs, but I had a job to do, and I did it. Amazing. It was just blind luck that one of the terrorists was carrying orders from Lebedev. We never would have known about the airlift if you hadn't been so courageous. Oh, no, no, don't start that. Just following orders. And we might never have recovered the shipment. It all depended on you. Well, I was happy to do my part. Do you mind? We're talking. Agent Denton. Do you mind? I was just telling Shannon about the operation. Quite a success, wasn't it? We sure appreciate you staying late and helping out. Shannon never lets go. Back to the same old routine. Of the fact that we spotted her in the bathroom. But you know, that's fair enough. That's really rude. Looks like the cleaner bots were busy when I was gone. Busy day, but as you can see, I got to everyone. I can finally start on some paperwork. As usual, take what you need. I don't think it will be long before Versalife steps up production of the vaccine. Hemi's a real bro, you know? Oh, right, new AUG. 
EMP shield protects against electricity and anything that could damage your bio and energy levels directly. Ballistic protection protects against bullets of all forms and blades of all forms. Guess which one we encounter more often. There you go. Of course, like I said, if I had just dropped that particular AUG canister, and oh, here's another one, but we've got this slot already. But if I had just dropped that canister instead of using it, I could have saved two subdermal spaces for the two different cloak types, and thus been invisible to all things for a relatively short amount of time because both of them are really energy hogs, as you might imagine. So let's snoop on our friend's uh, email account. Oh, that's nice. Regeneration or energy shield augmentations. I'll be looking forward to that. Yeah, Manderly dismissing the excessive force charges. Francis Hamilton from the CDC. He's got bad predictions about the Great Death. Not much else to say, unfortunately. I could have sworn there was something else in here. I was thinking of an augmentation canister, but that's further down the line, as it turns out. Now, let's see here. Hey, Jacobson. Oh, no new emails. That's boring. So this meeting here, by the way, if we had actually killed Navarro, would be the moment he gets to say, Dude, what the hell? Of course we didn't, instead we took down the proper target, and so it's just going to be more of a sort of commiseration dude what the hell instead. And go figure, the one time I remember that damn thing, it's uh, empty. A lot of surprises this time. Paul, a terrorist. Wow. Well, I took out his boss. I hope that changes his mind. I wonder what it is he found out. Why he'd defect. He thinks he has proof of a conspiracy. Wild stuff, huh? I'd like to hear what he has to say. If you hear from him, or if you find out where he is, don't worry about the info link. I'll erase the archives. You think he's right? Worth hearing him out. I've never known Paul to make a mistake. Manderly was tuned in when you reached the 747. It really is all over for Paul. I know it can't be easy for you, not knowing where he is. Just hang in there. I'll let you know if I find out something. Paul never was gung-ho aggressive like some agents. I guess I know where he's coming from. I've armchair quarterback my share of search and destroys. Turns your stomach sometimes. If you need me, I'll be tuned in. Just holler. I know it can't be easy for you, not knowing where he is. You know, Jacobson's a real bro, too. Echo is just full of good people, no matter what Paul says. How are you holding up? Fine. I completed the mission objectives. You were ordered to assassinate a man in cold blood. It must have been difficult. Not if you pause for a second and think about who he was and what he stood for. It's a shame when a difference of opinion gets somebody killed. That's all I have to say about that. Every war is the result of a difference of opinion. Maybe the biggest questions can only be answered by the greatest of conflicts. Let's hope not, but we're on the brink of another world war. Speaking of which, tell me what you need. I'll load you up. Let's see. Well, this is no question at all. Sniper rifle, 30 out 6. You learn fast. I'm impressed. I'm so glad Carter agrees. You better leave that house out of here. Take them out from a distance. Don't let yourself get in the way of enemy fire. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. go on about JC a bomb, but nah, I love that line. Leave me alone. That's weird. And then Navarra's login didn't work. Nor did Herman's. That's definitely weird. Well, I guess it's empty, so that explains that. Let's check back here. We know the prisoners are dead, but... Not much happening down here, Agent. We had to execute the prisoners. They wouldn't talk. 
Simon shot one of them himself. Now that's somebody you don't want to piss off. Hey, now, I'll have you know I shot them both. All the same, this post is a little more exciting when we've got someone in custody. Take a look around if you want. Yeah, I, I will, but there's nothing here. Just a bunch of cleaner bots. Down here in the uh, small hours of the morning. Not much going on. Not anymore. Well, that's to be expected. Pretty much everybody's asleep, gone home. Only Manderly, the agents, and uh, a few of the important staff are around thanks to the emergency. So long, agent. Now that that's over, they're all going to be heading home, too. Me, I'm off to Hong Kong. Time to start the second, approximately third of the game. We'll miss you, Agent. Strange you were reassigned so soon after only one day. You know what they say about China, right? That's where UNATCO sends people they aren't sure of. Kind of what Central Asia used to be for the Russians. Don't get mixed up with the wrong triad. From what I hear, that was Paul's mistake. Well, have a good trip. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll see you later, Private Lloyd. But maybe not. Because it's time we leave this place. I'm taking you to New York. My orders are to go to Hong Kong. Your brother's in trouble. You need to meet him in Hell's Kitchen at the apartment. What's wrong? I'll let him speak for himself. He just wanted me to get you to the hotel. But what's this? It looks like the New York chapter of this game is not quite over yet. Paul's in trouble, and he can only trust his brother to figure out what to do next. But you know what? I'd like to share something with you. Some interesting information that I figured out recently. Because I, I, di I didn't get it before, but I, I get it now. I get it now. It's all, it's all clear to me. I, I don't even know how I didn't see it before, why I didn't make the connections. So on today's Conspiracy Corner, the ultimate Conspiracy Corner, I'll tell you what I now know. I'll tell you what I learned about FEMA. The truth. Oh, FEMA. FEMA, FEMA, FEMA. Some folks will tell you that it's a secret plot to take over the United States, but they're wrong, the poor fools. The secret societies have already won. They're already in control. FEMA is just a contingency plan in case this sad excuse for a democracy makes a, a misstep that takes it out of alignment with our secret masters. And, and who are they, you ask? Oh, oh they, they go by many names. Many names. Today you'll call them the Trilateral Commission and the Council on Foreign Relations. But dig deeper, and you'll see, you'll see the CFR and its British sister, the Royal Institute of International Affairs, were created by the Round Table Societies founded by Cecil Rhodes. You know, Rhodes Scholar Rhodes. Well, Rhodes was also a Freemason, and the Freemasons just happened to inspire the American Revolution. And the Freemasons also created the Bavarian Illuminati back in 1776, and when the Illuminati were crushed and scattered, they took them back, became one and the same, the Illuminati cell in London helped inspire Marx and Engels in 1847, and the Round Table millionaires funded the Bolshevik Revolution. Both the East and the West have been dancing on their strings since the very beginning. And it goes back further. Modern Freemasonry was founded by the Rosicrucians, a secret order which inspired and directed the Protestant Reformation itself. And the Rosicrucians, the Order of the Rosy Cross, just a new name for the Old Knights Templar, when their order was destroyed by the French King Philip and Pope Clement V. And why did they fear these secretive bankers, these heretics, with all of Europe's money running through their fingers? It wasn't just that, it was the Priory of Sion, and the secrets they held which really gave them power. 
The members of the Priory of Scion knew a great secret that would undermine the Catholic Church. The fact that Jesus had children, children whose line had proceeded down to Charlemagne and the Merovingian kings of France. The papacy moved against them too when Pope Zachary accepted Pepin the Short's assassination of King Childeric III. But what's that you say? What's so special about the children of Jesus? Is he really the son of God? Or something near enough for the ancients? Why did Pythagoras combine mathematics and esoteric secrets, something also practiced by the Freemasons who can trace their history back to the builders of ancient Greece? Why is the Kabbalah a mathematical study of the Hebrew Bible? What knowledge did Moses really bring from Egypt and from the top of Mount Sinai where he visited God in a storm of fire and noise? Or should I really call him by his true name? Akhenaten, the renegade pharaoh of Egypt, who held the wild belief of a singular all-powerful god and who was banished from Egypt for his heresy. And why did the first civilization of Sumer build temples that reached up to the heavens so their gods could land upon them to visit their children? And who really built the great pyramids? It wasn't the Egyptians. They're too old for that, no. <laughs> There's only one reasonable answer to these questions. Aliens. <laughs> the Cro-Magnon man never interbreeded with Neanderthals because we were too different. A new species genetically engineered from Neanderthals by a race of long-lived aliens, which those who knew them respected as powerful, but those who only heard of them after they'd left mistakenly called gods. But they didn't all leave, not all at once. Some remained and interbred with humans, including one in particular named Mary. <laughs> so, so you see, it all makes sense now. <laughs> Everything makes sense. <laughs> Oh, that's right. I was going to talk about FEMA, wasn't I? <laughs> well, even if our leaders are hand-picked for us even now, there's plenty to fear from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. They say it's just for hurricanes and floods and other disasters, but it's more than that, much more. <laughs> now you think it started with Jimmy Carter, the trilateralist, but it's older than that. Oh yes, older. The first executive orders were signed by John F. Kennedy in 1962. Poor Kennedy. Killed by the CFR for trying to stop the Vietnam War. But he did their work for them in this case. With a series of executive orders, he gave the Office of Emergency Planning, the forerunner to FEMA, the power to seize all radio and telecommunications, every fuel source and mineral deposit, all forms of transportation, public, corporate, and private, and every seaport, airport, highway, waterway, and railway. They also have the power to register, relocate, and conscript every American citizen for whatever purpose they deem necessary, and all they need is a declaration of a state of emergency by the President of the United States. And then there's Rex 84, King 84, short for Readiness Exercise 1984. It was a little something put in place by Ronald Reagan in case us citizens decided not to go along with their master plan. A list of 100,000 potential subversives who could be arrested and taken to prisoner camps in the case of those wonderful words a state of national emergency. And you'll never guess who wrote it. It's our good friend General Oliver North. Of course, Rex 84 is outdated these days. Who needs a 33-year-old list when you've got a terrorist watch list that a dozen different departments can update at once? And these lists aren't just for foreign nationals, ladies and gentlemen. Personal thoughts. April Fools. Except for the FEMA section, actually. I may have exaggerated the point, but everything I said was true. Except about Kennedy. 
uh, the, the, but the executive orders are a matter of public record, as is the terrorist screening database used by Homeland Security agencies today, and REX-84 was discovered by the Miami Herald during their Pulitzer-winning coverage of the Iran-Contra affair. Still, it's not quite as dire as I painted it. If you actually read the executive orders, the intent is more like what Sergeant Michael Berry was saying earlier. It's basic tactics. Protect your command centers, your airstrips, your industrial zones. The orders are really about making a series of plans to evacuate civilians in the case of a nuclear attack, and to keep infrastructure and communications safe for military use in the case of an invasion. And it's no accident they were written about midway between the failed Bay of Pigs invasion and the Cuban Missile Crisis. In the 80s, Reagan expanded the mandate to include insurrection and mass protests, and it's possible, even likely, that all these executive orders are illegal. But they've never been challenged because they've never been implemented. And with luck, they never will be. As things stand, it's not even clear that the president has any authority to declare a state of emergency. The way it works right now is that governors can declare a state of emergency, usually after a flood or a hurricane or a tornado, and they can then petition the federal government and FEMA for support and financial aid. And as we all learned after Hurricane Katrina, FEMA can't even get that much right half the time. I'm really not sure that we have much to fear considering that the people running these agencies are as nepotistic and incompetent as all the rest of us. And before I go, I'd like to thank Jim Mars, who wrote Rule by Secrecy in 2000, which is a book I found invaluable in creating a lot of these conspiracy corners, and which served as the basis for the first section in today's corner. It's actually very well researched, aside from the baseless speculation and the reliance on discredited or outright false sources, and if you heard echoes of Dan Brown or Assassin's Creed in there, it's only because they all draw on the same well of crazy ideas. Somehow people arrive at these theories by refusing to trust some people and yet trusting others way too much. But thanks again for joining me in Conspiracy Corner, and I hope I'll see you soon.